fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question, and here's one of the happy happy people have to say, Wheaties, how are Wheaties, and the doo-doo-doo, and okay, okay. That goes for the star wherever you are. Take Barbara Ann Scott, figure skating champion from the Northland. Watch her on this one. Barbara Ann's good. Now there is a champ who's a real Wheaties fan. Sure helps to keep a gal up on her toes. A guy, too. Take Bob Lemon, who pitches a lot of ball for the Cleveland Indians. Lemon knows what champions know. Wheaties for breakfast, away you go. Gosh, no wonder the champs of tomorrow are eating Wheaties today. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties and you'll be doo-doo-doo and okay. Okay. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? The Lone Ranger and Toto were heading west toward the town of Jasper in northern Texas to see their old friend, Marshal Tom Shannon, when they saw a rider approaching. Drawing his Stetson low to conceal his mask, the Lone Ranger eyed the oncoming horseman closely. Toto, Marshal Shannon, go in. Hold it, hold it. Hold it. Oh. Marshal Shannon! Oh, 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 oh Marshal. What great <laughs> sakes alive, Tano. How are you? And you, mister? Fine, Marshal. Well, I haven't seen you two since we rounded up Spider Wilson's gang three years ago. We were on our way to town to ask if you've heard anything about Doby Dodge and his killers. Heard about him? Why, doggone it, mister, I'm trailing a couple of his rattlers right now. What? Yep, two of his men robbed the cattleman's bank in town an hour ago. These are their tracks. Oh, tracks, easy to read. Uh, you might have passed the skunks. Well, until a few minutes ago, we've been riding through the hills to avoid being seen. Ah, we angled down to trail short distance back. Then you haven't seen the critters, huh? No, but we'll join the search for them. Oh, good, I hoped you'd say that. All we've got to do is stay with these tracks. Then let's go. Good. Come on, sir. Get on. For some time, the man-hunting trio rode in silence, gradually reducing the outlaw's lead. As they approached open country, Marshal Shannon pointed to distant riders. They're the fellas we want. The masked man nodded grimly. Come on, sir! The gallant stallion responded with a mighty burst of speed, pulling away from Scout and Marshal Shannon's wiry bay. Slowly and relentlessly, the distance between the Lone Ranger and the fleeing outlaw shortened. That's it, Silver. Come on, big fella. Faster, Silver. Faster! Scar-faced killer named Nevada and a swarthy skin gunslinger known as Half Pint turned in their saddles to look at the oncoming rider. Half Pint's voice shrilled with panic. He's after us, Nevada. Get him! From the saddle? You jughead, we can't hit him. I told you you'd miss. We should have hit in the hills instead of heading for the hideout. That gent's mask, Half Pint. What? Right. He's talking to us. Mask and no mask, he's after us. Nevada fired again. We can't hit them unless we stop to take aim. We'll stop when we reach those rocks ahead. They'll cover us. Get it. Come on, get up there. The Lone Ranger guessed their plan, slowing Silver to a halt. Seconds before the outlaws reached the giant-sized boulders, he fired from the saddle. Down, oh, 
A silver bullet struck Nevada's arm. Oh, 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 oh. Gasping with pain, the wounded killer drew rein behind the protecting rock. Oh, 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 oh. Come here. Uh, Use your left hand to fire. Show yourself. The fire will blow your heads off. Uh, Throw down your guns and come out with your hands up. Oh, two of them out there now. Three of us have you covered, so you might as well give up. Oh, three to two. They're in the open. We might be able to get a lucky shot at him. We'll try it. With one arm useless, Nevada's face twisted with pain as he risked showing himself to fire. But before he could pull the trigger, the Lone Ranger's Colt roared. Hey, what? The bullet smashed Nevada's gun as Marshal Shannon and Half Pine fired at each other. Oh. The undersized gunslinger fell to the ground badly wounded as his shot went wild. Realizing the hopelessness of their position, Nevada shouted, Hold your fire, I give up. What about your partner? He's hurt. You come out with your hands up. All right. Uh, You'll keep him covered, Marshal. I'll get his friend. Go ahead, mister. My right arm's hurt. I stopped the bullet. Be no more gunplay unless you try a fast move. Tie his hands, Tonto, and we'll take care of his wound. Me savvy, Marshal. Uh, what about his pal, mister? He's badly hurt. A few minutes later, the outlaw's wounds were bandaged. Realizing the seriousness of his injuries, Half Pint whimpered. Oh, I'll die. There's a doctor in town, isn't there, Marshal? Yeah, Doc Burgess will be able to do something for him. Did you recover the money they stole from the bank? It was in their saddlebags. Good. Marshal, how you know these fellas belong to Dodge Gang? I wouldn't have known it, Tano, if I hadn't gotten handbills describing them a few days ago. The Scarface critters got a tattoo on his gun hand. Isn't that right? It was a dead giveaway. Uh, They're wanted for half a dozen murders and robberies. Uh, I'll die if I don't get help. We'll take you to town. Uh, and you have a lot of questions to answer. To avoid curiosity about his mask, the Lone Ranger waited in the hills outside of town while Tonto and the marshals stopped at Dr. John Burgess's house with the prisoners. Leaving Half Pint in the physician's care, the lawman took Nevada to jail. You're behind bars to stay, Nevada. I've got friends to get me out. <laughs> Your friends will soon be right where you are, now that the Lone Ranger's after what? the gang. The Lone Ranger? Yeah. So that's who that masked man is. He and Tonto will find the gang, but you might save him some time and trouble by telling where Dodge and his killers are hiding. I'm no squealer. No, well, maybe your friend is. Half pint won't talk. I'll soon know whether he will or not. With a deputy on guard at the jail, Marshal Shannon returned to Doc Burgess's one-story, three-room house. The doctor met him at the door. Hey, Tonto's with the prisoner, Marshal. How is he? And I've done all I can for him for the time being. He stopped a couple of bullets. I know. I fired him. A doggone near killed him. I had to drop him, Doc. If I hadn't, he and his pal would have killed Tonto, the Lone Ranger, and me. Well, I'll do my best to pull him through. You think he'll make it? Well, he has a 50-50 chance. I'd like to ask him a few questions. All right. But I don't guarantee that he'll be able to answer them. Come on, Marshal. I hope he'll tell me where to find Adobe Dodge's hideout. Don't count, count on him being able to tell you much of anything right now. He's on the cot there in the bedroom. Thanks, Doc. Uh, How do you feel, half fine? Uh, I'm mighty tired. I'm sorry you're wounded so bad. Well, if you hadn't gunned me first, I, I'd have gotten you, Marshal. So I reckon you had no choice. I want to give you a chance to help yourself, Half Pint. How can I help myself? Tell me where to find the Dobie Dodge and the rest of his gang, and the law might be lenient with you. Uh, I, I've been thinking that over, Marshal. This redskin was talking to me. About what? Uh, turning state's evidence. But what he said makes a lot of sense. Good work, Tonto. Mm. I, I know I... I might not get out of here alive, so I, I reckon I, I better square things. I've I never done any real killing, Marshal, except in self-defense. That's for a jury to decide, half pint. They'll be in the rest of the boys. They're different. Every one of them's a killer. I know. I, I'll tell you where to find them. Where are they, half pint? They're, they're holed up in, in a doggone good... I... Yes? Uh, yeah. 
That's enough, Marshal. Just a minute, Doc. He's going to tell me what... He's not going to tell you anything. Him lose consciousness. Yes. Oh, doggone it. Pulse weak, Doc. Uh Uh-huh. If he just stayed conscious a few minutes longer, just a few seconds... All we can do from now on is wait. Me, go tell mask friend. Half pint ready to talk. While Doc Burgess kept watch at half pint side, Tottle hurried to report to the Lone Ranger. The masked man listened attentively to the Indian's account of what had happened in town. Too bad he lost consciousness before he named the hideout. Doc not know how long him stay unconscious. What about the killer named Nevada? Will he talk? Marshal say no. Then we'll have to wait for half pint to regain consciousness. That's right. You better go back to town, Toto. Stay with him until he tells where the gang is hiding. Ah, and where me meet you? I'll be in the hills at the campsite we've used before. Me savvy. We go after Dodge and his killers as soon as we learn where to find the hideout. I'll see you later. That's right. Easy, sir. Big fellow, scout, easy fellow. Monster! Meanwhile, in town, Marshal Shannon had gone to the jail, hoping to goad Nevada into telling where to find the hideout. He stood outside the killer's cell, grinning derisively. Your pal Half Pint's a lot smarter than you are, Nevada. He's going to save his neck by telling all he knows about Adobe Dodge and the gang. You're lying. Oh, it's gospel truth. The poor critter was all set to talk when he lost consciousness. I hope he never comes to. He'll come to, all right. We'll get all the information we want from him. If I'd known that, I'd have killed the double-crossing rat. Of course, if you want to save your skin, Nevada... My offer still stands. Huh? What offer? Turn state's evidence in the gang. And I'll do my best to see that you get life instead of a hanging sentence. My it's your you... only chance of escaping the gallows. No! Don't be a jughead. You're wanted in half a dozen places for murder. I'm not talking. You'll not get another chance. Get out of here, Marshal. Leave me alone. Sure, I'll leave you alone. Any luck, Marshal? He won't talk, Slim. I didn't think he would. I'm going back to Doc's place. You stay here and keep an eye on the prisoner. Right. Shortly after 7 o'clock that evening, Marshal Shannon left Doc's to go home for supper, unaware of the fact that the Lone Ranger was on his way to town under cover of darkness to share the watch at Half Pint's bedside. (laughs) As the masked man drew rein at the back door of Doc's house, the sound of a muffled cry reached his ears. Easy, steady, big fella. The buildings on both sides of Doc's place were dark. That cry might have come from the jail. Moving silently, the Lone Ranger strode toward the lighted jail five doors away. As he approached the building, the back door opened. The Lone Ranger stepped back around the corner of a darkened general store. From his place of concealment, he saw Nevada leave the jail. A jailbreak. With a quick look up and down the dark alley, the outlaw hurried to a nearby stable. A few moments later, Nevada led a horse from the stable, swung to its back, and raced out of town. Get him, get him. Come on, get him. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Did you ever go shopping for groceries with your mom and pass something that looked so good you just had to ask her to get it? Mmm, like those Betty Crocker cake mixes with pictures of all the delicious cake flavors on the packages? You look at them, and you want Mom to bake up every one. For instance, Betty Crocker's white cake mix. Why, that bakes up into the highest, lightest, best-tasting white cake ever. A real lick-the-plate kind of cake. And all Mom has to do is add water and the whites of two fresh eggs for a perfect cake every time. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. Every Betty Crocker cake mix comes out perfect. And mmm, what flavors! There's yellow cake, chocolate devil's food, honey spice or gingerbread, angel food, marble cake, and Betty Crocker's two newest, chocolate malt and peanut delight. And of course, there's Betty Crocker's popular brownie mix, too. to continue. Inside the jail, the masked man found the deputy tied and gagged. As soon as the gag was removed, the wide-eyed lawman gasped. Boy, you're masked. I'm a friend of Marshal Shannon's. Only one masked man's a friend of the marshal's. That's the Lone Ranger. That's right. 
I saw Nevada leave here. And you let him go? He took a horse and left town. Oh, you should have stopped him. He may be on his way to Dodge's hideout. I'm going after him. Now that you're free, you better find the marshal. Tell him what happened. I'll leave a trail. He'll have no trouble following. Oh, so that's it. Ask the marshal to organize a posse and follow me. I'll save your scheme, mister. All right, I'll see you later. You bet. I'll go after the marshal right away. As the Lone Ranger followed Nevada's trail from town, the deputy ran to Doc's house. Marshal! Marshal Shannon! Doggone your hide, Slim. Quiet down. I'm doing my best to save this man's life, even if he is a fool. Oh, sorry, Doc. Where's Marshal Shannon? Well, he's not here. Him go home, eat supper. Uh, then I'll head for his place. Well, what's so important? Did the crook in jail talk? He got away. What? He busted out of jail. The Lone Ranger's on his trail now. Oh. I gotta tell the marshal to round up a posse. Lone Ranger... Trail crook. Oh, that's what he said, Tonto. I didn't know the Lone Ranger was in town. Me not know it, Doc. Torn between his desire to join the Lone Ranger or stay with the unconscious outlaw, Tonto stood by the uncurtained window uncertainly. A few minutes later, Marshal Shannon and six townsmen rode by on their way out of town. Tonto returned to the sick room, where Doc was taking the patient's pulse. Uh, me stay here, Doc. If it's all right with you. Doggone glad to have you stay, Tonto. His pulse is a little stronger. He seems to be resting easier now. Mm, that good. Maybe him wake up soon. Tell where find hideout. Get him, get him. Come on, get him. Unaware that he was being followed, Nevada raced the stolen horse across the plains and through the hills in a southwesterly direction. It was well after midnight when he reached Big Bear Hills. Presently, he approached a narrow gap. A heavily armed killer named Cheeto called... Who? 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 Get your hands away from your gun. It's all right, Cheeto. It's me, Nevada. Come on, get him. Come on. Where is half Plant? What happened you come here in such a hurry? Plenty happened. Huh? Oh, who the who? Easy. Now, wait till Toby hears about it. Oh, he's in the shack. He turned in two or three hours ago. I'll wake him. I will go with you, amigo. Come on. Get up. Come on. After passing through the gap, Nevada drew rein a few minutes later near a large one-room shack. As he dismounted, Cheeto approached on foot. Well, looks like all the boys have turned in. See? They'd better pack the gear and start traveling. Light the lantern while I wake Doby. Uh, I will take care of the light, amigo. Doby. Hey, Doby. Uh, wake up, will you? I've got bad news. Yeah. Nevada. What's the excitement? Where's half pint? I left the snake in Jasper. Now we got light. It's better, no? Yeah, it's fine, Cheeto. Half pints in Jasper? That's right, Toby. Marshal Shannon captured us when we tried to get away with $10,000 of the bank's money. How'd you get free? I busted out of jail to warn you fellas about half pint. He's going to talk. Talk? Yeah. He's hurt so, the marshal took him to the doc's house in town. He lost consciousness before he could tell where to find this place. But he'll tell everything when he comes to. As Nevada explained the situation to Adobe, the Lone Ranger reached the unguarded gap. Through the opening, he saw the lighted shack some distance away, guiding Silver to the shelter of nearby trees. He left the mighty horse ground hitched, then moved silently toward the building. Adobe Dodge's coarse features were distorted with rage. As he cursed Half Pint, the other two members of the gang wakened. The killers, named Ransom and Speed, soon learned the reason for the gang leader's anger. Why, that dirty runt-sized squealer. Why didn't you gun him before you left town, Nevada? That's what I'd like to know. Uh, I'd never have gotten out of town alive if I tried it. I figured the best thing for me to do was come here and warn you fellas. We'd better clear out before Marshal Shannon comes after us, Adobe. Uh, Shannon won't come alone either. He'll have the Lone Ranger with him. Yeah. What? Oh. The masked man's been looking for you a long time, Doby. He helped the marshal get half pint in me. So the Lone Ranger's after me. He'll get you unless you move fast. All right. Loot from my last few robberies under the floor. Let the boards get it out, boys. Right. We'll be set to travel less than an hour. Hey, boss, listen. Huh? Rider, sir. You're heading this way. I bet it's Marshal Shannon and the Lone Ranger. I'm already here, Nevada. Hey, the window. The Lone Ranger's Colts were in his hands as Nevada drew the gun he had taken from the deputy. Get out! A silver bullet struck his arm. I'll kill you! Oh, 
Adobe's weapon was smashed as it cleared leather, and Cheeto staggered back, dropping the gun he had drawn as he fell with a bullet in the shoulder. Speed and Ransom hesitated, their hands on the butts of their holstered guns. Go, or get your hands up. No, 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 don't shoot. No. The threat of twin Colts was too much for the killers. Slowly they raised their hands to shoulder level, while Adobe reached for the gun Cheeto had dropped. As his fingers closed on the ivory handle, the Lone Ranger fired again. Stop! Adobe screamed as a silver bullet burned his knuckles. Let me get into this fight, mister. It's all over, Marshal Shannon. No. I'll keep him covered from here while you go inside to take over. Right. Come on, Slim. You too, Hank. Pete, Clem. Great galloping grasshoppers. Look at him, Marshal. All five of them are lined up. Nevada, you oh, dirty my. jailbreaking skunk. I got a score to settle with you. Keep away from Wait, me. the law's got a score to settle with all of them, Slim. Tie their hands behind them. Then we'll take care of the ones who are wounded. Right. Hank, Pete, you keep them covered. All right. That takes care of dodging these killers, Marshal. Thanks to you, mister. Slim told me you followed Nevada. He warned the gang that you were coming for them. Hello, where'd you come from? Me come from town. Oh? Half time talk. Tell where, find hideout. Nevada led your mask pal here, Tano. The whole bunch are ready for the trip to town. Well, that's good. I heard Doby say the loot from several robberies is hidden beneath the floor of this shark. Well, we'll look for it before we leave. And there's nothing more for us to do. I'm much obliged to you for helping get this gang. I... Oh, sure. That's what I always say every time our paths cross. I hope they cross again soon, Marshal. Adios. So long and thanks. Come on, Dotto. Adios, Marshal. Goodbye, Tano. Uh, Credit for all tides, Marshal. As soon as we collect the loot that's hidden here, we'll be all set to start for town, Slim. You mean there's loot hidden in this place, too? Yep. Doggone, I didn't think we'd recover any of the loot these crooks stole. (laughs) You never know what to expect, Slim, when you work with a lone ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.